Have you ever felt lost or stuck? Like you're in the middle of the ocean trying to swim towards the closest island but you're just not sure where that island is? So you just keep on swimming around trying to keep your face out of the water? Or maybe you feel like you know in which direction to swim, you see the island, but the currents are just too strong and they keep bringing you away from your goal. These are two very frustrating situations to be in and if that's how you feel right now, this is your mission. Would you choose to accept it? Give me eight minutes to share with you a simple process on how to write your personal mission statement and you can then do so in under half an hour. I've been working on designing lifestyles worth living for 20 years now and today I'll share with you my best strategy to recenter around your life purpose. Whenever I feel like I'm doggy paddling <laughs> in the middle of the ocean, that's how I get myself back on track. The magic is to craft or recraft or revisit your personal mission statement. Writing a personal mission statement is super valuable, especially when your life feels stagnant because it anchors you as you build towards your dreams. It keeps your eyes on your life goal and it helps eliminate distractions. You know all these requests and temptations that pull you in all kinds of different directions and leave you feeling like you've done nothing of value all day? Yeah, those distractions. When you know your mission, it's easier to say no and weave them out. And while it won't make you exempt from life challenges, it will make you more resilient when the setbacks do come, as we know they will. So I'm going to give you the whole rundown. I recommend you listen to the whole thing first and then go back and do it. And now I can hear some of you think, but MJ, writing a personal mission statement is like mission impossible. It's just too much commitment and I don't like to write. Anyway, my friends, I promise it will feel good and it will be a much better use of 30 minutes than scrolling social media. So start by getting yourself in the proper mood. Find a quiet space, play your favorite music, maybe light a candle and grab a cup of coffee or find an inspiring spot outside. Plan for a couple of fresh pages of paper along with a pen and a highlighter. Then title your first sheet my interests and give yourself five minutes to brainstorm on all the things that you are interested in. Include things that you loved doing when you were younger, things that you enjoy now, as well as things that you might not have had the chance to explore much yet, but that appeal to you. Don't discriminate against your own thoughts, write them all down. It's a brainstorm. Then title that second page, my strengths and spend five minutes to capture all the things that you are really good at. Write about the things that you feel strong and capable when you do them. The things that you are recognized for and the things that your friends come to you for help with or advice on. Make sure to include your best skills as well as your stronger character traits. And if that's difficult, put yourself in the shoes of your mom or your best friend or your partner someone who loves you and who would know exactly what to write on that sheet if you ask them to complete it for you. Now let's go to our third sheet and that one is titled, What Brings Meaning to My Life? And it is for all the things that matter most to you. Spend five minutes writing about the causes that really get you. What change would you like to see in the world? When do you feel in awe or elevated? What connects you to something larger than yourself? When you're done with the writing, it's time to get your highlighter out and spend five minutes identifying any crossover between your three sheets. So for me, I loved playing teacher as a kid. I still love to teach, shocking, I know. And I think I'm pretty good at it. It also brings meaning to my life, so that's highlighted on all three sheets for me. So you do your own digging and find all of the elements that make all three sheets. And keep in mind that things might not be as clear cut on your paper as it is in my example. Just like with high school math, the answers are always easier to explain once you've resolved them than while you're trying to figure them out in the first place. Whatever is highlighted on all three sheets, those are the elements that should be central in your mission statement. Because when you get to do those things, that's when you are most likely at your happiest while also contributing the best value that you can to the world. So now, Give yourself no more than 10 minutes of focused attention, it doesn't have to be more complicated than that, and craft that unique statement of value 
combining as many of your highlighted elements as you can. And add a word or two about why this matters to you. So for example, my current mission statement is to inspire, facilitate, and empower happier and healthier living in the world. I do this so that my son James inherits a better environment to evolve in. Before you go on writing your own, I'd like to offer three pieces of advice. Number one, choose running shoes. If it were clothing, a lot of people think that a mission statement is like a wedding dress, something shiny that you get to pick maybe once or twice in your lifetime and that needs to look fantastic because everyone will be staring at it. But that's the complete wrong image. A personal mission statement should be a lot more like a good pair of runners, something comfortable that will help you do a lot of mileage and in which you can face the storms of life. If your runners are still comfy after a few years, you keep them. But if they are beat, it's time for something fresh. Number two, make your mission statement about what you are doing each day, right now. It's not about here's what I want to be when I grow up. It's about here's what I'm working on today to inject value in my world. And remember, if any part of this exercise is difficult, I bet you have a family member or a friend who would love to help you with it. And number three, don't let your current situation discourage you from dreaming big. For example, I started my career working in a bank. It wasn't super exciting to me, but I decided that living the pressures of the corporate world would help me better understand and address them when I'd start the actual wellness phase of my career. Once you've written your personal mission statement, reading it should feel fun and proud and authentic and elevating all at once. After all, you've now made it to the proverbial island. And reading it every morning as you're enjoying your cup of coffee or whatever it is you're drinking on that island is the best way to keep you away from stagnation and emotion towards your big life goals. Before I let you go, here's a quote from philosopher William James, which I think really applies here. All our life is but a mass of small habits, practical, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual, that bear us irresistibly toward our destiny. If you'd like a quick example of how a garbage collector injected meaning in his work to not feel like his life is stagnant, here it is for you. My friends, I'd love to read your mission statements and cheer you on. So please, share in the comments below. Love you guys.